Welcome or welcome back. This video will cover the wiring up of the digital thermostat, which I'm going to use to better control the thermoelectric cooling unit on my cooler. And at the end of the video, I'm going to go over how to set the thermostat. This is part two of making my cooler box, which in turn is a continuation of my minivan camper kitchen build. So if you missed part one of the cooler, you can go and watch that to see how we got to this point. And you can watch the video about the kitchen boxes, for the other parts of the kitchen build. So for a bit of background, in the prototype version of my van, I had a very small cooler, which I used with ice. It was a bit of a pain because the ice took up so much room in the cooler. So I decided to upgrade to some sort of electric cooler. Now I know the general consensus is that compressor fridges are the way to go, but I find them rather startlingly expensive given that I'm not trying to live in my van full time. So I bought a thermoelectric cooler. Thermoelectric coolers are great in some ways. The way it works is very simple and the only moving part is a fan, so there's very little that can break down. But they are less energy efficient and since they blindly cool down to about 22 Celsius or 40 degrees Fahrenheit below the ambient temperature, they can either be not cold enough or too cold depending on the outside temperature. The model I got draws 48 watts, which works out to about 4 amps per hour on a 12 volt system. So that means I would need about a 100 amp hour battery just for the cooler alone. So to try and improve the efficiency, I've added insulation and now I'm going to be adding a thermostat. This is the thermostat I'll be using. It's what is known as a W1209 module and it's sold by lots of suppliers. I bought mine from Amazon. The price can vary a lot. This one was $5 with free shipping, but it can take up to a month to arrive. There are other suppliers that can ship faster, but the thermostat will cost up to $18. There's a couple of good videos out about this thermostat. One is by Robojax and it shows how to program it. And there's another one that shows it being used on a similar cooler. I'll leave links to those in the description. So if we look at the circuit board, you can see there's different parts. So this part here, this is the relay, and that's what does the actual switching on and off. There are four screw terminals where we can attach our wiring. One for the ground, one for the 12 volt in. There's one called KI, which I interpret as being K in. And there's another one that's KO, which I interpret as being K out. We're gonna go over all of that in a minute, so don't worry. There's also a display, which shows us the current temperature and allows us to see what we're setting. And we use this series of buttons. There's set, plus, and minus, and that will allow us to program whatever we need into thermostat. There's also a socket here for the temperature sensor, and this is its probe. So let's open it up so we can get at the wiring. The old wiring had a positive and negative wire coming from the plug, which then split to power the cooling unit and the cooler's fan, plus a ground wire that also split to go to the fan and the cooling unit. Keep in mind that in wiring like this, you can either have a red positive and a black negative, or a black positive and a white negative. In this case, I have some of each. So to make it a bit easier to follow, I've made the diagram with the same colors as the actual wires that I have in my setup. So hopefully that'll be able to keep things as clear as possible. In the van, the cooler will be connected to the house battery and the wiring will be protected by a five amp fuse. And that will go to the plug on the side of the cooler. Our first step will be to wire up a switch. I'll have the power coming from the battery interrupted by this switch and then going out to power the thermostat. Next, I'm gonna solder the main ground wire and the ground wire from the secondary fan together. Throughout, I'm gonna be using heat shrink tubing, which is gonna hold everything together and it's also gonna protect any of the connections from shorting. I've loosened up all the screws on the terminals, so now I can just push my wires in and tighten it down so it's held firmly. Next, I'm going to take the positive wire that is coming out from the switch and connect it to the 12 volt terminal on the board. In my case, since the cooler also runs on 12 volts, I can use the same power source for both the thermostat and the cooler. So what I'm going to do is add just a little jumper wire that's going to connect the 12 volt terminal to the K1 terminal. The next connection is for the wire coming out from the thermostat, the KO or K out. I want the thermostat to control the cooler and the secondary fan. So I'm going to start by soldering the small red positive wire going, that's going to the fan with the bigger black positive wire that will go to the cooler unit.
Now we're gonna go back to the wires that are coming out of the cooler. I'm soldering the other end of that white ground wire, the one I attached to the ground terminal on the thermostat. I'm soldering it to the ground wire of the connector plug. Most of these coolers can also keep food warm just by switching the polarity of this plug. But keep in mind, I have no idea if the circuit board can handle the reverse polarity. So I don't recommend trying it. I might test it out later, but I'll need to be willing to sacrifice a thermostat to find out. Since I only have two hands and I don't have a proper soldering setup, I usually add extra solder to one wire and then I can reheat that to make my connections. I do the same for the two black ground wires, one that's coming from the cooler's own fan and the other from the cooling unit itself. Now I can solder them all together. I put some heat shrink tubing on the wires before starting. So I'll be able to cover the soldered connections so they can't short if they touch with the positive connections. Next, I'm gonna solder the main positive wire, the other end of the one that's going to the switch, to the short positive wire coming from the connector plug. This will allow the current to go from the plug to the switch, from the switch to the thermostat. Now I'm gonna take the other end of this black wire that's coming from the KO terminal on the thermostat, and I will solder it to the two positive wires that are going to the cooler. One for the cooling unit itself, and the other for the cooler's fan. Now I can test my connections to see if I made any mistakes and if everything is properly connected. I'm gonna clamp the negative from my power supply to the ground pin of the plug and my positive to the positive pin. So we have power to the thermostat board and the cooler is running. So if I cool down the probe, then the cooler will shut off. In this case, I had it to set to about 13 degrees just for testing purposes. So it would switch off relatively quickly. And the on off switch also works fine. Okay, so now I can attach the thermostat into the box. I cut a small piece of 1 8 of an inch MDF board to hold the thermostat. I had to cut away the middle because the solder points on the back of the board stick out. I'll screw the board securely to the MDF. This is the cover plate that I made. I've installed it into the box so it's ready to go. And I've also put the styrofoam back into the box. Now I can screw the MDF panel to the inside of the box, having made sure that the thermostat display and the buttons line up with the cover plate. This is my work setup. I had the cooler perched on top of the box so as to get it as close as possible, but still have room to do the wiring. I left enough slack in my wires to be able to secure them in place neatly. I'm using small cable clips, similar to the one that was holding the wires in place originally. I presume that if they had a small screw hole here, I can put a few more screw holes. I was worried about the wires being visible or too close to the cooling unit's heatsink, but it turns out there's a neat space just here, perfect for tucking the wires out of sight. Now the next step is to put the plastic panel back on. I cut a small slot in the panel for my wires on the opposite side to where the plug fits into place. The last step is to measure for the placement for the hole for the temperature probe. In the final version, I actually had to move the hole lower down as this position didn't leave enough slack to get the probe through. So next, I put the cooler in the box. Sounds really simple. It was involved a lot of wrestling with the cooler, swearing, but I did get it in. I got it all in, everything works, and it's um, nice and snug. So now we can go over how to set up the thermostat. So for our example, I've set the temperature for five degrees Celsius. So if I turn on the switch, you can hear the fan working and it starts cooling down because it's over five degrees. So when it gets to 4.9, the cooler switches off and the fan stops. I've reached in and put my hand on the probe and the temperature is shot up to 6.8, 6.9. And of course the cooler is come back on. The secondary fan is working nicely, blows cool air up past the cooling unit to help its own internal fan move the warm air away from the outside of the cooling unit. When it gets back down to five degrees, it shuts off again immediately. Now let's go over the setting of the other parameters on the thermostat. If we look at the display, it shows the temperature that it's reading at the temperature sensor probe, in our case inside the cooler. When I push the set button once, the display flashes the current target temperature in our case, five degrees. 
While it's flashing, I can use the plus and minus buttons to set a nuke target temperature. But in this case, I'm going to leave it at 5 degrees. Now if I push and hold the set button, I can enter the advanced settings mode, where I can change the parameters. I'll know I'm in the parameter mode when I see P0 on the display. If I push the set button again briefly, then I can change the P0 settings. I can push the plus and minus button to toggle between C for cooling and H for heating. The default when you get the thermostat is cooling, so you can just leave that. Now I push the set button again to confirm my choice, and then I'm back at P0. Now while I'm still in the parameters menu, I can push the plus button to go to P1. Then I push set again, and now I can change P1. P1 is very useful. It's what is called hysteresis. Basically, you can set a number of degrees, and the cooler will go that far past its target before switching off. I'm going to set it to 1 degree. So now the cooler will reach the target temperature of 5, but it will keep going. It won't switch off till it has gone another degree to 4 Celsius. This way the cooler doesn't just turn on and off constantly. I push set again to confirm and get back to the parameter menu. Now the next few parameters you probably won't need. P2 allows you to set a maximum temperature and P3 a minimum temperature, beyond which the user can't set the thermostat. But since I'm the only one that's going to be using the thermostat, I don't need to lock out any of the settings. If we go on to P4, P4 allows you to correct the thermostat for the difference between its readings and the actual temperature. Say I set it to 5 degrees, but it actually switches at 5.1 or 5.2. I could set P4 to correct that, so it would switch at exactly 5 Celsius. But I don't need that much precision. So P5 is another one that we need. This allows you to set a time in minutes as a delay before the cooler kicks in after getting back above its target temperature. Right now it's set at 0. For now I'll set it to 1 minute, and I push the set again to confirm. The last one, P6, you also don't need. It's an alarm to tell you if it's over its maximum temperature. The default is off, so you can just leave, the, leave it like that. Now we have to wait 6 seconds, and then the thermostat will save the settings. Now we'll go back to showing the temperature at the probe. So remember, I've set 5 degrees Celsius as the target temperature with 1 degree of hysteresis and a 1 minute delay. So now, as you can see, we're already below 5 degrees Celsius, but it will keep cooling down for another degree until it reaches 4 degrees Celsius, and then it turns off at 4. Now to speed things up, I'm going to put my hand on the probe to heat it up. So now, even though we're way above 5 degrees, it won't turn on until its 1 minute delay has run out. It's cooling down on its own because I took my hand away, but you can hear that the fan has not turned on. After 1 minute, it kicks on again because it's still above 5 Celsius, and it will keep cooling until it reaches 4 Celsius. I did some tests earlier where I set a target temperature of 6 degrees. And I set P1 to 2 degrees. And the delay P5 to 10 minutes. So this means it will cool down until it gets to 4 degrees, 2 degrees past the 6 degrees, and then shut off. And once it heats back up to 6 degrees, then it will start the timer and wait 10 minutes before kicking on again. By then, the temperature is about 7 degrees. I get a range between 4 and 7 degrees Celsius. With these settings in my kitchen, I could get it to be off for 20 minutes and on for 40 minutes. So about two-thirds of the battery usage, which is good, but not quite what I wanted. Then I measured the temperature of the cooler with a reusable ice pack, the kind you would throw into the cooler for an overnight trip, and I got readings of around 10 degrees Celsius. So that's not good if you're storing meat for several days, but I'm not doing that while I'm camping. If we bought meat, we would be eating it the same day. I was fine with the ice in the cooler, not really thinking about the exact temperature, so I should be fine with a range of around 10 degrees. So 
So I did another test. I put some pre-chilled food in the cooler this time, jars of pickles and such from the fridge, because the mass of cold food helps stabilize the temperature in the cooler. And this time I set a target temperature of eight degrees Celsius and a hysteresis of two degrees with a delay of 10 minutes. And I let that run for several hours in a room it was about 20 degrees Celsius. So as you can see from this time lapse, the cooler cools down to six degrees and shuts off. The temperature slowly rises. When it reaches eight degrees, the delay timer starts, and then it lets it get up to about eight, 8.8, 8.9 before the time runs out and the cooler comes on again. Then that stays on until it gets back down to six degrees. You can't always see it hit six degrees on the time lapse, but you can see when the numbers start moving back up. This worked out to be about half an hour on and half an hour off, which will give me theoretically 50% of the energy draw compared with just having the cooler on all the time. Of course, it remains to be seen how this behaves in a real world situation. So that solves some of the drawbacks of a thermoelectric cooler. I can reduce its energy usage a bit. And of course, with the thermostat, I will never go below what I've set so it won't freeze my lettuce on a cold day. So the other downside of a thermoelectric cooler, that it's not cooling enough on a hot day, for that I can just supplement with ice, the same as I did with my regular cooler. I do have to be careful though, because the cooling unit on this cooler is low on the side. So I have to make sure that no water splashes up on that and shorts it out. So for that, I've bought a leak proof pasta container, which can hold the ice, keep the ice clean so it can double as ice for drinks and the water won't leak anywhere. That about wraps up this video. Thanks for, very much for watching. And remember, if you didn't see part one of how I made the cooler box and the accessories that go on it and in it and how I did the insulation, you can check out part one of this video. Just for fun, you can also have a look at the crazy time lapse of making the custom cover for the thermostat. And of course, please come and look at the other videos on my channel to see the rest of the camper van build. Thanks very much.